Hello, Darren Alf here from BicycleTrainPro.com and today is the first day of my Northern California Redwoods Bicycle Tour. I'm in Eureka, California right now. I actually arrived here late last night. I drove up from Southern California, did a quick tour of the old town, and then uh, I drove across town to Dick and Kathy's house. Dick and Kathy are warm showers hosts that I wrote to before I came up here and I asked them if I could park my van at their house for the week that I'm away on this bike tour. So um, had dinner with them last night and then slept in my van last night and this morning woke up, had breakfast, Dick showed me around his property. He's got a six acre property here in Eureka, showed me around. He's got a really cool barn, two houses that he built himself. It didn't, didn't work out because, well, we just got two and I mean, I didn't realize that building a house would take five years. Yeah. And then we started, we had some kids and then they started going, you know, you sort of got into the community and into the activities. But you wanted to build a boat? Yeah, my my first wife was a um, boat person. Like a sailboat, or yeah, yeah like uh. a sailboat. So this would be big enough to do it here. Yeah. But I started building a house and realized that building a boat would be a lot worse. <laughs> I think so. He's got orchards and bees that he keeps and all kinds of cool stuff. Really, really neat. Okay, so come around here. Okay. And uh, this top box is empty. Here's, oh, see I had two cakes of sugar in there. You can see they're pretty quiet. Yeah, they look like they're sleeping. Yeah, they're just being, you know, they're a little cool, but they're warm enough that they can, uh, put your hand here, it's not that cold in there. Uh, they, do, they do generate heat. How many bees do you think are actually in there? This one? This one's probably 20,000, 20,000. In that one box? Well, that's the top, this fifth box, there's two more boxes yeah. below. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they range like 15,000 in the winter up to like 50 or 60,000 in the, in the summer. Wow. They, they change, they, you know, no point having extra mouths to feed them. So, just, so just here you might have 200,000 bees or something. Oh yeah. Okay, so here's a, Here's an experiment of whether they like sugar water, take sugar water faster than sugar cake. Seems the sugar cake is winning. Yeah. Well, I'll have to weigh it, see and see. Yeah. Um. So after that, and after getting my bike packed up, I am now out on the road with my bike and I'm heading north up the coast today. Here we go. I've been driving all night long to the place where I belong. Back to where I started from The only place that I call home Seventeen around the bend Drinking with my old best friend Listening to the radio I thought we'd stay until the end It wasn't always right But it wasn't all that bad This was all I thought they would have changed the name by now The owner, someone as anyhow That's where I saw Jenny first Then I think I almost burst I heard that she's a doctor now She got out of this place
All right, I did it. Just completed my first day of my Northern California Redwood bike tour. Um, what you might not know is that this is not my first time in this particular part of the world. In fact, my very first bike tour that I ever did at age 17 started in Eureka, California, which is where I began this morning. I thought, because I am in Eureka again, and it's been a very, very long time since I did my first bike tour at age 17, that was 17, 18 years ago, um, I thought I would kind of tell the story of my very first bike tour and how that went. Like I said, I was 17 years old, I had just graduated from high school and I wanted to do something kind of big and challenging before I went off uh, to university and I saw a bike tour as a way of kind of testing myself on my own for the very first time. And uh, yeah, so I, I told my parents that I wanted to do this bike trip from Eureka, California all the way to Mexico and they were relatively okay with the idea, but they wanted someone to go with me. They didn't want me to do it all by myself. And that's understandable. So I reached out to a bunch of my friends and my friend Jason Weber volunteered to come with me from Eureka, California down to San Francisco. And then I had other friends join me on other parts of the trip. But uh, my friend Jason joined me from Eureka, California to San Francisco. So for months, before our bike tour began, we were planning this trip. Basically, I was planning the trip and Jason was tagging along. And one of the problems with having Jason come was that he didn't have a bicycle. So not only was I preparing my bicycle, but I was also preparing a second bicycle for Jason. So as a poor 17 year old, I was buying all this equipment, not just for one bike, but for two. And then I had two bikes all set to go and the night before the trip began, Jason basically like called me and said, dude, I can't do it, I don't have any money, I, I can't go on the trip. And I don't know exactly what happened. I think I called his mom and said, Jason's coming with me, tell him that he's coming with me. I'll pay, if he has to, you know, if he runs out of money or something, I'll, I'll pay for it and he can pay me back. It's not a big deal. So that's what happened is he almost bailed on me the night before the trip began. Um, and then I ended up paying for things a little bit on the trip um, just to help him out financially or whatever. But that's how I got him to come at all. So we took a Greyhound bus all the way up to Eureka and we got off the bus at like 6 a.m. It was freezing cold. Um, it was just about to get light and there were a bunch of like homeless people loitering around and, and it felt very, very scary actually. And when I was back in Eureka just yesterday, um, the, the problem is exactly the same. There's still like a lot of homeless people just loitering around the city. So anyways, um, we had these two bicycles in cardboard boxes and we had to get them out of the boxes, put everything together, load all the bikes up. And this was the first time that either one of us had ever loaded our two bicycles that we were gonna ride all the way down the coast. So once we got these things loaded, well, first of all, we dumped the cardboard boxes that we shipped everything in. There was a dumpster near the bus station and I threw the boxes in there. And when I looked in, the entire dumpster was filled with X-rated magazines, like Penthouse and Playboy and things like that, and worse. So I grabbed the cover off of one of these magazines and kind of stuck it onto the back of Jason's bike without him seeing me do it. And he rode for about a mile with a naked lady on the back of his bike. But that's how we began our bike tour. And one of the things that I do remember most about the start of our trip is that because we had never actually loaded the bicycles up with food and all the stuff that we were actually gonna be carrying with us on our trip, when we first started cycling, we were like weaving like this. We couldn't keep the bicycles straight because when you ride a bicycle that's loaded down with gear, it's very different than riding an unloaded regular bicycle. So we were really struggling for the first several miles and, and I was thinking like, there's no way that I can ride this bike all the way to Mexico. Luckily, you do get used to riding with weight after a while, but that is something that pretty much every person that's new to bicycle touring um, has to go through. And we went through it as well. 
But um, big tip there, if you are new to bike training, make sure you pack up your bike before you leave home. Um, that'll help you a lot. Anyways, um, our first day on the road, I should talk about that because today was my first day on the road here. And I don't remember a whole lot from the actual first day of the trip. What I do remember, however, is getting to the campsite and being absolutely exhausted. Like I had never ridden that far in my life. We rode 60 miles on the first day of the trip, which was the farthest I had ever ridden in my entire life, Jason too. And we were beat. Like we set up our tents and we were gone. Like we passed out. We didn't even eat. We just put the tents up, laid down, boom, done. And what I do remember is waking up the following morning and it felt as though my legs, like my quads, had doubled in size because I was using all these muscles that I had never used before. And it takes quite a bit of uh, oomph to push a loaded touring bicycle up hills and down the road and that sort of a thing. So that's what I remember from the very first day of my 2001 bike tour down the California coastline with my friend Jason. Now, 2018, here I am back again and the riding today was a little bit easier <laughs> than it was back in 2001. I've got quite a bit of experience behind me and um, today was really a nice, nice ride. I stopped a lot, took photos, took video, and um, it was windy and cold for a lot of the ride, but overall, relatively comfortable. So now I'm at Patrick Point State Park. I paid $5 uh, for a campsite here, and I might take a shower tonight. Um, until it gets dark, I'm just gonna walk around and kind of explore a little bit, then I'll make my way back to the campsite, cook up some food, and call it an evening.